Alrighty, Lumberjacks, welcome back. Uh, today, we're going to be going over um, a little bit more advanced work in the buncher. And by advanced, uh, it's not really advanced. It's more just showing you guys how I would cut into a block and maybe some of the techniques um, that I use to uh, plan it out. Uh, the big key to using the buncher is having kind of a plan ahead of time. Uh, you can just haphazardly go off and start bunching if you really want to, but without having at least an idea of where your landing is or sort of a plan of what action of what you want to do, um, it's really easy to create a mess really fast. So hopefully with the description I'll give you, um, it'll give you kind of a better idea for setting up your blocks and um, good practices for cutting so that you... Uh, can kind of have a clean area. Now, again, big disclaimer, I am not a real life buncher operator. So this is just stuff that I've seen other people do and um, things that I've developed while playing the game that I feel work really well for me. In real life, there's obviously lots of other considerations. So for anybody who's a real buncher operator, please don't take this as me trying to um, trying to uh, pretend like I know exactly what I'm doing because obviously there's lots of other other factors in bunching in reality. So um, like I said, the very first thing you kind of need to do is a plan. So for instance, this is the timber stand I'm going to start cutting into just on my right hand side of my buncher. So you do want to have sort of a plan of what you want to do. So I generally do roadside processing, roadside logging. That's uh, kind of my my go-to thing. So usually we'll have the truck set up right on the road. We'll have the loader loading right off uh, the side onto the truck that's parked on the road. Now, in order to do this, we need to cut the wood in a way that will be able to bring it to uh, a lined area about here so that it can be processed uh, and loaded onto the truck. So a lot of people get overwhelmed when you get the buncher because they don't know what the best way to go in. They don't know how to enter the woods. They don't know when to start cutting. Sometimes they end up blocking themselves in with trees and they can't figure out where to go next. So generally what I will do is I will cut uh, alongside and make almost a road. So I'll start on the right hand side. As I'm cutting straight through this brush or all this tree stand here, I'll be laying all my trees down at a 45 degree angle like this until I get to a point where I figure that's enough uh, I want to stop. So I'm going to probably cut to about this little tree here and then I'm going to take a hard left and go straight across and as I'm cutting in this direction I'm just going to lay the wood towards the back of the line and then what we'll do is we'll just go up the other row and back and then back and back and back and back and we're just going to kind of cut it in a circuit uh, kind of a serpentine pattern back and forth so that we're not wasting any movements uh, tracking backwards and forwards. All right, so oops. Um, so again, that might sound confusing, but hopefully as we go here, it'll make a little more sense. Um, again, this buncher head, when you turn it on, you do have the ability to kind of eat up the ground. So I'll tend to kind of clear out a spot uh, right near the entrance of where I want to begin. That way, I'll know where my uh, loading kind of area is going to be. So that's kind of where I want to mark it. All right, so then all you got to do is line up straight, sort of like this, and try your best not to turn your machine. Um, just try to keep going as straight as humanly possible. And we're going to chop and chop and chop. And again, I'm laying everything on sort of a 45 degree angle pointing towards the road. You can lay it at a 90. It's just a lot harder to skid. You have to wait towards the end to skid it forward generally or there's just a lot of extra hoe chucking that you don't want to do. So again, I'm just going to kind of leave some 45 degree bunches. And all we're doing is we're not doing a big clear cut here. All we're doing is making a, a nice little road to kind of signify our, our line. So basically everything that's kind of within close grabbing range, you don't want to be extending too far because we're not really attempting to make too much of a, a deal out of it. And while you're cutting, you gotta mind uh, mind your tops while you're dropping the trees. So when you're dropping it, just make sure where you're dumping it, you're not gonna smash it up against other trees and lift your machine up. Generally, if you back off on the claws a little bit, like your primary claw as you're dumping. So as I go to dump it into the woods, if I keep everything really tight and I hit another tree, it'll lift me up. So I generally back off the claws so the head, the tree's almost a little bit loose in the head and it'll work its way through the timber a little bit better while you're dropping it. Okay, we're just gonna keep going here. Again, just kind of cut the stuff that's close to you. Um, try to keep your, your tracks and your machine as straight as possible. And what I'm doing, I'm kind of back 
uh, I'm kind of back bunching a little bit here and reversing. You don't have to back up like I'm doing. I'm just making the the bunch is a little bit bigger so it's a little bit more fun for the skitter. It kind of it's annoying when you're skidding and then you only have, you know, maybe like, you know, two trees in a bunch to have to go pick up. So by doing this, you kind of keep your bunches a little more uh, valuable in a way. Okay. And again, 45 to the road if you can. Again, in some situations, this is really easy because it's really nice flat ground. Um, steep ground can be a bit of a nightmare. Why don't we just get that little guy just for fun? We'll make it easier on the way back. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to keep going. Actually, you know what? I'll add these to this pile here to make it more of a worthy grab. There we go. Bloop. And we're just going to keep cutting along. I'm just going to, I'll make my turn here pretty quick because I don't want to cut this whole forest down. Again, with this game, um, there is a tendency uh, to not want to cut a crazy amount of trees down because of the performance. Sometimes you get some really bad FPS drops. But the trick is, as long as you have a decent space between your piles, um, the game won't lag out. At least a half decent space between your piles, then the game won't lag out. So we're just going to kind of pile this stuff right here. Beauty. And I think we're going to make our turn here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Make our turn here. So we kind of got a nice opening. You could go right to the back of the timber as well if you really want to. But I'm just going to turn here for the video's sake. So let's pretend this was our line. This is where we're stopping right here. We don't want to cut any further. Maybe the ground's marked out and that's the best we can do. Okay, so here we go. So now as you can see, we have this nice beautiful line of timber facing, or nice beautiful line of cut through the timber all the way back to the road. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn, so I'm 90 degrees, again, just like I explained. We're gonna cut right up to here and then we wanna go hard left. So we're gonna cut this direction now. And as we're cutting, we're gonna lay all the trees towards this lake. So the tops are all pointing that way so that the butts, the fat piece is gonna be facing the road where we want the wood to go. Okay, so 90 degree turn, here we go. Now we're just gonna, the key is trying to keep your tracks straight and only cut what's within your cutting range. I see lots of guys um, when they're trying to make these nice cuts, they get a little greedy and they wanna they wanna go get more trees. Well, if you only have a certain amount of trees, that's the way it goes. Um, but don't get off of your beaten trail um, trying to hunt trees because you will lose track of where you were. And then suddenly you're into the next part of the stand and you're wondering what the heck happened. So try to keep your tracks as straight as possible and just follow that line. And if you ever need to check to look back you can always look back and go, oh, we're off the line. We need to go this way a little bit or that way a little bit. But again, if you keep your track straight and don't turn, just keep going forward and cut. Like I said, cut with cut what is within range. If it's outside of your range, don't worry about it. Leave it because we're going to do the next row up and all that tree, all those trees on my left hand side are still going to be there waiting for me. OK, and again, I'm just laying everything straight to the back here find little pockets of holes in the trees here again these are really really small trees back here so um the bunches might be a little bit uh small for the first bit all right so just for the sake of the video i'm not going to cut a crazy long strip here uh just because we could do this absolutely all day long i mean i would do it all day long because i love it so let's see where are we at here so why don't we see i didn't even go very straight i should have went more 90 but I, I went this way, so that's fine, doesn't matter. So what I'm gonna do now is at this little tree here, I'm going to now turn the machine and go right back up that strip again and try to straighten out my line because I actually went at a 45. <laughs> so let's try this, okay. So this is gonna be our new row over here. So again, now what we're doing is we've reached the end of our, our line and we're gonna turn our whole machine and we're gonna go right back up that line that we just cut. So what I generally do is try to line my machine up with um, with the center of the trees, basically, so that I'm, I'm cutting straight on with that next line, so that there's a lot of trees available in my cutting range. 
So now here we go. And again, we're just laying the trees again, right against that back line of timber right there. Dunk. And again, we can get these trees, but they're they're a little bit out of range. So I'm just going to stick to exactly where we are. I'm trying to also correct my really bad 45 degree angle here that I made. So I'm a little bit off the next line. So just cut what you can reach. Don't overextend. You don't have to do anything crazy. And on some maps, in some areas, there's going to be more trees and some there's going to be less. And you're going to want to uh, fight it. So now, again, when you're, um, when you're laying these trees down, um, you want to try to lay the trees between the other piles that you made. Don't lay them on top of those piles, because if you lay them on top of those piles, there's a chance when you skid them, they're going to interact with each other and pull them out of line. So always try to lay them in between the lines so that you're kind of like pile back, pile forward, pile back, and then we'll want to do another pile forward here. So again, I don't have a crazy amount of trees to work with here, so we're just kind of snipping what we can. And we can just keep mowing here. And again, so we don't want to put it so that it's hitting those trees, so we want to lay the trees down so it's right in between both piles. So you got an open pile, front pile, open pile at the back, if that makes sense. And again, very um, sparse trees in these some of these areas, so sometimes you'll go and only get a couple of trees um, if you want, like for instance, there's not very much in this pile, so I would back up and just, I'm gonna add this to this pile because it's kind of a small skid pile. And I'm just gonna lay that right in there. Perfect. Okay, and then same difference. <clears throat> As you guys can see, we're kind of doing a, a pattern here now, like a serpentine pattern. So now I'm gonna turn the machine again, and we're gonna go straight at this timber. And we're going to do this whole block out so you can see exactly what we're doing here. Okay. Whoops. Oh, geez. Don't do that. Whoop. Ah, I caught it. Um, as, you, as you play more, you will find techniques in different areas and different ways to lay the trees down that you prefer. Um, but this is, this is what I've seen most of the time for both real life operators and what's worked best for us playing the game as well. So again, um, spacing, uh, in this case, these are probably far enough away. You can lay it kind of right in between that spacing and that's totally fine. And we're gonna go back here, cut this one, cut this one. And I'm just gonna actually add these to this pile. I think the biggest key is to not have the, the heaviest part. So like if you look at this pile, these are probably touching the tops uh, a little bit on this pile. And now the tops are not the big concern. It's when you get the really heavy part of the tree, like the, the midsection, if you're laying that down on top of these trees, it'll probably move them while you skid it. Um, but most of this stuff is gonna be going straight out the landing. So if the tops are just touching the other pile, it should slide right off there and won't hurt nothing. But we'll see. Uh, so again, here we are making our turn back to serpentine the other direction. I'm gonna grab this tree here. Actually, I might actually take this one behind me too. Because that one's just kind of, it's kind of out there on its own. And I don't like it. I like a clean line if I can get it. Okay. So again, we're doing our pattern back. And again, just from looking from this view so you can see what we're doing. So we went straight up. We took a left. And then we're basically zigzagging like this pattern back and forth and back and forth until we reach the road and all those trees are down. Uh, and we will be at that point here shortly. Uh, let's just make sure we know where we are. Okay. So again, I try to line up sort of with the center of the trees. And it's never going to be a perfect line because uh, trees do not grow in perfect lines. So uh, this isn't a plantation, so we have to work with what we got here for timber. So again, we have a little bit of an opening here. So I would actually lay it right in here would be the spot I'd put that. So then you're kind of between both piles, and that one pile is so far back, I don't think the tops are touching it. Uh, we can grab, I'll just skip that big one. We'll grab these two little guys here. And I'm actually going to add these, I think, to that pile behind me. Again, when you're bunching, it's important to remember, you don't want to, you want to try to reduce skid times as much as possible. So the more you can fit into these piles for those big skidder grapples, the better. 
Um, if you got to backtrack your machine a little bit, it's totally fine. The the thing you want to remember kind of doing production is you don't want to be backtracking, you know, like I don't want to grab that tree and drive all the way to the road to put it down over there. That's just too far. But if I got to drive, you know, just over there to add to a pile and it's a really quick grab, uh, it's absolutely worth it. Because then when you're skidding it, your skidder doesn't have to do 300 trips for a bunch of tiny little trees either. Okay, so now we got a little bit thicker trees here so we can kind of mow these out. And again, I'm just kind of keeping to this line. I'm not getting too uh, too crazy. I think I'm just going to lay these down right over here. I'm using the Tiger Cat 822, and it's probably one of my more favorite um, machines for bunching because it's really, really, it's got really, it's a small machine, so it fits in a lot of weird places. It's got like a zero turn or zero swing turn on it, so you don't have to worry about your butt smacking into anything. Whoops. And if you do stuff like that, just bump your bump your logs back together as tight as you can. Because the tighter those are together, the better of a time you're going to have uh, skidding it later. Or the less you're going to have to hear from the skidder operator telling you you're a terrible buncher operator for leaving such terrible bunches. But as long as the butts are fairly close, like those are okay. You'll be able to grab that no problem. It's just when they're like really, really far off, then it's kind of a pain in the butt. Pain in the butt. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, so again, I just like to clean up some of this stuff to keep the line nice and even. I'm just going to finish off this little bit here. And I might contribute these to this pile over here just because we're right here before we start our next line. Sure, that looks good. And now we are on not our, maybe not our last line. I think we'll have one more line that we'll have to do uh, to pick up the rest. And generally, when you're in your final pass, um, you'll you'll probably find yourself zigzagging around a little bit more because you want to clean up what's left. Uh, so these guys, I'm actually going to dump right in here, a little bit bigger trees. Good enough. And again, you see how I'm kind of interlacing the piles so that they're off of each other still. And you'll see that when we look at the overview afterwards here. Okay. Whoops. Oh, we lost a tree. That happens on occasion. So, you're going to lose trees. That's the way they go. Sometimes they fall. All you got to do is pick it back up again. Sometimes when it's a bigger tree, it's a little more pain in the butt. Sometimes you got to buck it up into pieces. But I just re-grab and lift it, turn it, and then start cutting again. Just like it never happened. But even me being doing this as long as I have in this game, I make so many mistakes bunching. Sometimes you just get complacent too, you've been doing it too long and you're not paying attention and, and that just goes to crap. Okay, so there we go. And we got one more pass. I think we'll take care of uh, what's left here. So there's only a little bundle of trees. So again, you don't even have to do a full pass with this stuff if you want. You can just hit it to clean it up. and then decide where you want to put the wood. So actually, when I get closer to the front, what I'll generally do is decide where I want my line to be for my processor. So um, if I'm processing long logs, oh, let's hop out here. So if I'm processing long logs, you'll need a, a longer distance between the road and the piles. So if you want long logs, you'd want to lay your trees almost where they are right now, or maybe even a little bit forward. If you're doing short logs, you can bring them a little bit closer, probably where the buncher is. So if we're doing short logs, let's pretend, I would probably lay or start laying the trees down. I just want to make sure where my pile is here. Probably about here, and that's where I would start. So then you can just clean up the rest of your, your area here. And again, if you cut way too many trees, sometimes you're going to have frame rate drops. But as long as your piles are decently apart from each other, um, it shouldn't lag out too, too bad. And if you do smaller blocks like I just did, that wasn't a crazy big block. Um, that'll kind of give you a little bit more, a little bit more play for sure. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've done here now. So from down here, it's a little hard to tell, but you can see that line work perfectly. But all our bunches are ready to go now. So you can either skid them or um, what I generally do sometimes is I'll walk around with the loader and I'll actually pile these piles even bigger. And then I'll just process small areas depending on how how you want to do it. 
Uh, so let's go to the overview. So as you can see, pretty much everything is facing in a direction where I can bring it to the road. So if I go in here with a skitter, I would start at the front and work my way to the back. So I'd go here, I'd grab this pile, bring it up to this pile, grab this pile, bring it up to this pile, grab this pile, bring it up to this pile. And then either I'd probably start processing it because I'd be a lot of wood mixed together. And the more wood you have in a pile, the slower this game, unfortunately, acts. Um, the other option is to skid it all to a close location and then use a... Um, a piler or like a, a loader with a grapple on it and you can pile it however you want for processing but as you can see we took out that whole block it was really nice and clean we did the serpentine pattern back and forth and cleaned all that up and uh, now we have these little skids on the side of the road these little bunches of the 45s these can be easily grabbed by the skidder and pulled over and dropped into the front because now all the timber is gone so it's really easy to slip these out of the out of the uh, block but yeah, that's basically how I like to do bunching. Um, this is on flat ground, so it's the easiest form of bunching. Uh, you don't have to fight with any hills or do anything too crazy. Um, but this is uh, this is the most basic way. So yeah, you guys can give that a shot and see how it goes. Um, I'm just going to pop over to another map, and I'm going to show you guys some hill bunching, which is a little bit more of a nightmare, but it's still totally doable, so hang tight. Alrighty, welcome back. So we've now switched over to Fox Creek. Um, this one is full of hills and mountains, and it's a little bit more challenging to log. So I just wanted to show you the site that I had open right now that I've been working on. Uh, so I did come in here with the buncher, and just like the last section I showed you, we did pretty much the same concept, where I worked up the side, going uphill, laying it down at a 45 degree angle, and then I did zigzags back and forth coming down. Now again, disclaimer, real life... Um, machines slide they slip on the terrain it's dangerous working on your like if this is this is a pretty steep hill like looking at it from this angle it doesn't look crazy steep but when you're in a machine that's a decent grade for it to slide so in real life um going side to side is not really uh liable a lot of times they got to go up the hill and then back down and then up the hill and then back down um, to keep their tracks uh, straight on with the hill so they don't slide. So it's up to you how you want to do it in this game. Um, you can go all the way up, back down, all the way up, back down. Um, cutting downhill is kind of an... Uh, you can do it. It's just kind of a no-no because it's... One, your visibility is reduced when you're cutting downhill. A lot of the branches and stuff, it's hard to see the trees. And you're not going to get clean, flush cuts going downhill because the bottom of your buncher will hit the hill before it hits the tree. So what will happen is you'll have these really tall stumps when you're cutting downhill. So there are circumstances where you don't have a choice and downhill cutting is just the way it goes. But anytime you're going down a hill, it's better to go down and past the timber and cut it from the side so at least you can get a flush cut. Um, as opposed to going straight on at the timber like this like it's just not a good idea So either go uphill across or if you're going down um, Try to cut across this way So basically you're moving if I was moving the buncher down this way You'd want to be cutting trees from your right and laying them to your left cut from your right lay to your left as you're going um, I would never ever want to go straight down because you're leaving too high of stumps and just creating a havoc for yourself. Um, so anyway, I have the buncher set up over here on this uncut section, and this is a really crappy spot, so this is a good example. So where you have really weird terrain and you're really uncertain about how you want to do things, you have to kind of get a little bit creative. So depending on your operation, um, you can skid wood out. You can process wood alongside the road. You can use the loader to move the wood around wherever you want. Technically, how you want to set up the landing is entirely up to you. But if I was approaching this and pretend we had to cut from that tree on top of that rock to over on that side, um, I would probably start uh, right here at this base. And I would just pile. Well, I'm going to show you here. So cutting... Cutting uphill, especially in this game, because it is very unrealistic to the way that the physics work, um, is kind of a nightmare because the machine does crazy things and the trees do crazy things when you're cutting. So when you're cutting uphill, just go a little slower and watch what you're doing and don't rush it. That's the best kind of advice I can give you. So I'm just gonna clean up some of this brush here so we got kind of a nice area to drop our stuff. So I'm going to snipe out this little tree here and give myself kind of a guideline for where I want to put my trees. So in this case, what I'm going to do, and we can always move the wood later if we don't really like where it is, but just as a starting point, I'm going to lay my trees down right here. 
And this is basically just kind of a cleanup spot for me so that I know um, so that I know exactly where uh, to put my trees so I'm not making a mess. I generally, as I'm moving forward up a hill, and I want to, I want lots of visibility in front of me while I'm cutting, so I want to try to leave my trees off to the side or behind me as much as possible, especially while I'm trying to figure out the terrain and while I'm going up the hill. So as we're going up, we're just sniping off all this <clears throat> little trees that are on the hill, and again, I'm doing lots of tracking, tr track, trekking, tracking of the machine back and forth um, because I just want the visibility in front of me. Um, as you get further away, you obviously can start new piles, but for now, I'm just kind of feeling it out to see how the land's going to be, see how the machine's going to be. We're cutting at some weird angles here, so we got to be a little bit careful. Again, the trees are a lot bigger on this compared to the last map we were just playing on, so you do a little less in the grapple if you can. And I'm just laying them over here. For me to trek back, like, you know, 10 feet, it might be a waste of production time doing it. But keeping my piles clean because I'm doing this all by myself uh, is a lot more worth it. So if I can keep all my wood in one spot, it's going to be easier to sort it out later. Now, obviously, if you're playing a multiplayer with a team of guys or something, I could be passing this off to a loader or passing it off to a skitter, whatever. So again, before I start going up the hill into no man's land, uh, I'm just going to keep kind of clearing a little bit of a spot. And the more stuff you clear, the more visibility you get, and the easier it is to kind of make a plan of what you want to do. So all of this brush can get wiped out of here. Just clean it up. Just drag your head around and smash it up. Uh, again, I'm just going to keep adding to this pile back here because it's not too, too far away. I'm not trekking back too, too far. But now it's in a nice spot where it's easy, visible where my wood is. I could go process that pile, no problem, and it would be fine. Uh, same here. I'm just going to keep cleaning up on the front here. Uh, we'll cut this tree and this one we'll call the front good. And again, you can do as much or as little as you want, depending on how you plan your block out. Okay, so now we're going to start going uphill. Now, once you start going uphill, uh, things get a little funky sometimes. So I'm going to add these last three trees to this little pile, and that'll be the end of that pile. So then you can always skid that pile, process it where it is and load it, do whatever you want with it. So I generally, when you're going in, you want to stay straight with the hill going up. Again, like I said, disclaimer, real life is a little different. Um, there's a lot more track slide. These things stick to the ground like Velcro. So let's let's pretend, uh, looking at our map here, let's pretend we, I don't want to do this whole block here because that's just too much for this video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut straight up and as I'm cutting straight up, I'm going to lay everything on a 45, just like we did before. And you're going to see a little bit of a difference when we try to go across. Because because of the hill, the trees are going to want to slide down on us. So we got to kind of find a method uh, while we're cutting so they don't do that. In real life, trees do slide, but not as violently as they do in this game. So it creates a little bit of a extra challenge for us. So again, I'm just going to go real slow and easy because these are much bigger trees. As you can see, my machine's taking the weight from it. So again, we're just going to lay these at a 45, probably right over here. And sometimes the bigger trees will get hung up in the timber, so you can kind of move it around or just leave it there. That's fine to you. Eventually, it will probably roll and fall down on its own. If it doesn't, well, we'll skid it out of there later. So again, just cleaning up the brush, kind of making myself a nice little home here. Uh, let's see if I can get that tree to fall down. Tap it with this one. Well, it seems to be stuck on something pretty good there. Generally what will happen, in real life, the top would probably either break off. It wouldn't snag quite as violently. Um, sometimes you can tap it with your buncher head to see. But it probably fell between two trees at the top, and then it's got pinned in there. So you can kind of play with it a bit if you really care enough. But it's pretty stuck, so we're just going to leave it. Later on, we'll deal with that. The skidder will generally be able to yank that out of there, no problem. So again, you can keep adding to this pile here. Again, these are bigger trees, so your skids don't need to be quite as impressive. But I try to keep them as close as possible. Generally, if I'm doing any kind of hill logging, I will use a line skidder to pull this stuff. Because trying to get a grapple skidder, uh, to get the grapple to sit evenly while you're playing with gravity is never a good time. So again, we're just 45-ing all of this stuff here, creating ourselves some breathing room. 
so that we can do a little bit more work. And obviously time and technique for cutting, that comes with time. If you're not super fast or super smooth, that will happen if you play long enough. Obviously using controllers and joysticks is the uh, easier way to go for sure, but you will get there. Okay, so let's just call this the line for now. We'll just leave this here. And we're gonna wipe this out. We're gonna wipe this out. And we're gonna wipe this out. Okay. So let's pretend this is our line. So actually we're doing pretty good here because this is actually really flat. It's uh, just that one section that's kind of hilly there. So um, I'm not gonna cut this, but you could do the exact same thing that we did in the last video because it's actually flat in here. So you can just cut a straight line across and then work your way serpentine back and forth. Now, the reason I wanted to show you hills is because of this. So let's find a held angle that we are coming up. So again, if you're coming downhill, I'm just gonna show you an example of why I don't like cutting downhill as I explained over there. So if I'm coming downhill and I wanna cut this tree down here flushly, it's very, very difficult for me to do that from above, which is why you don't really wanna cut downhill. One, see my visibility, I can barely see the tree. I can't see the where the limbs end. I, I mean, I can see the top up here. So I would line my top of my, uh, top of my, uh, head up with the center of the tree as I can see it up there and then you kind of just got to go by braille and hopefully feel it out by going slow but what'll happen is eventually I'll get the tree there we go got it so yeah I cut it but you see how high that stump is down there like that's ridiculous so now you got this giant stump here and you can't get your head level because basically what's happening is I'm just going to throw this over here basically what's happening is when you try to cut your head can't get level with the tree because it's going to hit the bank before it hits the tree. So when you try to go in, um, you can't get level for a nice cut. You can try to scoop it, but what will happen is the top part of your head, so like if you went into the tree, uh, like say you wanted to try to scoop it on the bottom like that, well you can't because as you can see, your tree is going to hit the top of your head beforehand. So even if you do make a cut, before you even close your grab arms, you're going to shoot that tree down the hill. So you gotta keep your head level while you're cutting. And the only way to do that going downhill is to have that big of a gap, which leaves a giant stump. So the way that you wanna do it is when you're going downhill, is you want to try to get alongside the tree while you're cutting it. Cause then from this angle, I have a much more flush cut that I can make. It's not, it's still gonna leave a bit of a stump, it's not perfect, but at least you can get a much more flush cut and you'll have the visibility back for grabbing that tree. As you can see, that stump's a lot nicer than the one that we just had. So again, when you're going downhill, you wanna try to line yourself up alongside the timber as much as possible. So uh, I'm just going to teleport this thing over to where we just were. Uh, I wanna show you guys if I can find the spot here. Oh, it didn't land on anything. Look at that bonus. So, same difference. This is a, a nasty little hill that was a real fun time going down. But again, going straight down is a terrible way to do it because when you're going straight down, you lose visibility. So what I try to do, again, is go down alongside it. So instead of lining my machine up directly with the timber, I'm gonna line my tracks up so we're just off side of the timber going down. So as if I could drive a straight line without hitting any trees. That way I can snipe these trees on the way down from the side. And generally what I'll do is I'll lay them off to my left. Uh, I do have stuff over here, but we're just gonna intrude on that because this is an example video. So again, I mean, this part's flat, so I, you can get away with that grab, that's no problem. Oops, and we wiped out a tree, which happens occasionally with this. Uh, that's the other thing, downhill cutting is you're gonna have trees disappearing, which is super annoying. Um, Mostly just because of the level of the trees. So again, I'm just gonna leave that with that one. But at, oops, but as you can see, it's a lot easier to hit these trees um, at an angle going down on these sharper, sharper spots. Cause one, you're again, not leaving those big stumps and two, the visibility is a lot better than trying to hit them straight on. And again, it's hard to do this block because we, we haven't actually, oops, we haven't actually cleaned up this block yet. It's still got all the old old stuff that we had already. 
And we just lay that right over there. And like I said, generally you can lay stuff at a 45 degree angle. The steeper the hill, I was just to see if we have a really steep hill spot around here anywhere. Uh, oh, this is pretty steep stuff. So if you're cutting in this kind of terrain, um, if you lay the trees down straight um, on this kind of an angle, they tend to want to slide down the hill at you. So if you're cutting in this angle, try to lay everything on a 45 against other timber. Um, that way it'll it'll all the weight will kind of shift into the trees and they'll kind of catch it. Um, that stuff you guys will have to kind of play with yourselves. Um, that or you just hand follow it all and don't use a buncher <laughs> or use a uh, use a different type of machine for sure. But yeah, anyway, that's kind of the gist of the video. Um, hill cutting. Anytime you're doing hill cutting, just keeping your angles straight. Again, the same technique that we used before um, does work in this case where you can go straight up 45 and then cut back zigzagging uh, or back and forth up and down the hill cutting from uh, your side also works. But yeah, once in a while, you're going to have to throw trees like I did here to clean up a spot off to the side and create kind of weird little... Um, I call them kind of like anomaly piles that aren't to your plan. And that's just to get cleaned up so you got room to move around. Um, you guys will find all kinds of different techniques that work for you. But these are kind of the fundamentals for getting the, the trees down in a nice way so that you can uh, start things out. Anyway, um, that's the end of this video. Hopefully you guys learned a few things for bunching. If you have any questions or anything, leave them in the comments below. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.